It's a pleasure to have an opportunity to come to you this week and just minister God's word to God's precious people. And I pray to God that we have something that the Holy Spirit has prepared for you today that will be a blessing to your life and, and, and make some changes and help you uh, make changes that you desire in your life and that you, the God's will for your life will be fulfilled. So before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody grab your Bible because this is a Bible study. Grab your writing materials because we want to make sure that you take plenty of notes. There are going to be several times during the course of this message that I'll tell you to write this down. So we want to make sure that you're writing down everything that you hear because I want to make sure that the Holy Spirit is giving you some good stuff in order for you to keep this evening. Amen. Let's take a moment and let's pray and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful to you, Father, for this time and this opportunity and this moment to come again before your precious people and share your word, Father. We thank you that we'll receive revelation this, this evening from everything that you're sharing with us by way of your word. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts. Give us understanding. You provide us with wisdom that we might be changed, Lord God, and changed in such a way that it would impact our lives forever and that we'll have a chance to touch other people's lives, Father, with what you're going to share today. And Father, we know in the midst of that that we'll make sure that we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' holy and precious name. We say amen. Amen. If you, will, let's, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 6. The book of Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 25, and we're going to be reading verse, verses 25 through 27. Matthew chapter 6. Uh, starting at verse 25 through 27. And this week has really just been impressed upon my heart that, that we talk about and that we'll be doing this for the next two weeks, but this is the first, uh, first chapter of that, that we'll be talking about God's prescription for a better life. That's God's prescription for a better life, and make sure you take notes on that. And today specifically, we want to we hone in on the topic of defeating worry. Say defeating worry. We want to make sure that we understand that worry can be defeated. We don't have to hang, hang on to worry. We want to make sure that worry, and you know that worry, can be defeated in your life. So if you have the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 27, we're going to be focused and going to be doing a lot of our study tonight out of the NIV translation. So if you don't have that, that's okay. But tonight we're going to be read, today we're going to be reading a lot of scripture directly from Matthew chapter 25 verse 27 and I'm going to look up here on the board and let's go ahead and get started. Jesus says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. In fact, let's go back to the first part of this before the comma. Jesus makes it clear, makes it plain. He says, I tell, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. If you're out there and you hear me, just say this to yourself, do not worry about your life. He goes on to say what you will eat or what you will drink about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and body and more important than clothes? Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Verse 27. Who of you by worrying can add one single hour to his life? Who of you by worrying can add one single hour to his life? Saints of God, worry is a huge problem for mankind, and it has plagued man since the beginning of time. Worry is often the starting place for many people when they are confronted with challenges in life. Regardless of the magnitude of the challenge, people oftentimes immediately respond with worry. So today I want to confront this issue of worry to help someone. In fact, I want to make sure that I help everybody that's listening to my voice and seeing my face so that you can understand that you can break free from the bondage of worry. Several times in the Gospels, Jesus tells us not to worry because he knows what worry can do. He didn't say not to be concerned, but he said specifically not to worry. See, when you're concerned about an issue in your life, 
that means that that issue is something of interest or important that has to be drawn out and attention has to be focused in on it. That means that you're concerned about it. It's something of interest and something important, but it has to be drawn out and you focus attention on it. But worry about that issue is totally different. And we need to make sure that we understand the distinction between the two. Because worry is an enemy to your soul. And many times people don't understand that and over a period of time, if they are habitual worriers and you have somebody talking to you right now, that at one point in time in my life, I was a habitual, habitual worrier. That when you are a habitual worrier, it is actually causing damage and causing defeat in your life and oftentimes you don't even know it. Many people immediately go to a place of worry when they're confronted with a challenge and they get stuck and they don't even realize that they're stuck. But you have to understand when you're worried about something and not concerned about it, but you're worried about it, you enter into a place of torment. In fact, the definition for worry is to torment with cares and anxieties. You start to torment yourself with cares and anxieties. To worry means that you are now converted the concern that you have to a place of focused and meditated fear that torments you. And you need to hear me, as a matter of fact, write that down. Because what you have, you have to understand is that worry is trying to defeat you. It's trying to damage you. It's trying to defeat you. And what you have to understand is that worry is meditated and focused fear that torments you. In other words, you're stuck in a place of torment because you perceive that there's no solutions to the very thing that concerns you. See, I'm an old country boy, and one thing I learned in growing up in the country, I see people in their vehicles sometimes get stuck in the mud. And they spin the tires, spin the tires, and spin the tires, especially if underneath that mud you had a, a, root, a root from a tree. They spin the tires, spin the tires, and spin the tires, and before you know it, you see all the smoke and stuff coming out of the tires. And as that tire builds up heat inside of it, before you know it, you got a blowout. You got an explosion of that tire. That's what worry does to us. Word gets us spinning our tires, spinning our tires, and spinning our tires, and before you know it, we got to build up a pressure that comes from the thing that we're worried about, and before you know it, that pressure got to have an outlet. That pressure has to have an outlet. It has, the way, it has to have a way to come out, and before you know it, that person explodes, and many times it, that person has an explosion of a problem that's related to their health. They have a problem that's related to high blood pressure, a problem that's related to something, but it manifests itself in their life in some kind of negative way because the negative problem that they're dealing with because of worry has to come out. Amen? So, we also have to understand here, and this is something that's going to sting a little bit, but it has to be said. And here, here it is. You don't have to worry. Worry is a choice. You don't have to worry. Amen? Even though word shows up at your doorstep, you don't have to accept the package. You follow me? Because if you accept the package, you got to get all the stuff that comes along with it. So worry is taking what may be a legitimate concern and wrapping it up in fear to create runaway thoughts that never resolves anything. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 6, uh, 6 and 27, how many of you by word will add one more minute to your life? Answer that question. In fact, I'll wait for you. Go ahead and answer that question. How many of you by word will add one more minute to your life? I'll wait. In fact, I already know the answer. It's added nothing to your life. If it's added anything to your life, it's added frustration. It's added all the additional health problems that you once did not have. It's added all this stuff that you don't want and that you don't desire because worry is not a problem solver. So you have to understand that and you got to make the distinction between what is a worry and what is a concern. A concern is something that you got to devote your attention to because it's a problem that has to be solved. And that doesn't mean it's going to be solved, but it's a problem that has to be solved. But worry is when you take that concern and then you wrap it up in fear of something that you have that has to be resolved and you can't get it resolved and you stay stuck in the fear of what a possible outcome could be. Now here's something else that you need to understand. You need to understand how worry comes. 
So here's the thing that we have to remember. Worry can come to you from different catalysts, but it primarily comes from uncertainty. In other words, you're not assured of an answer that resolves your concern. So you form a fear around the concern and it becomes a worry. So worry comes from uncertainty. It comes from the thing that you're not certain of. It comes from when you don't have an answer for something that you're seeking an answer for. It comes from when you're uncertain of an answer and life's pressure is pushing against you. And you don't have, a, you don't have answers for it. Right now, we're smack dab in the middle of an issue of a coronavirus, something that this world has not seen before. And people are worried, and they have legitimate concerns. People have lost their jobs. Many people are losing their jobs. People have become sick as a result of the coronavirus. People have passed away as a result of the coronavirus. These are legitimate concerns. But you have to understand that there is an answer. You just may not have it. It may not be an answer in the time frame of when you need it. But you got to understand there is an answer. But these are things that we're dealing with, especially with this virus that's totally out of our control. But we can control our response to it. Amen? So what creates worry oftentimes is uncertainty. That we make, that we, we make the choice of becoming fearful of what we don't know. Amen? So when you carry the suitcase of worry, the contents of the suitcase is fear of what you're not certain of. So when you carry the suitcase of worry, the contents of the suitcase is fear. Write that down. When you carry the suitcase of worry, the content of the suitcase is fear of what you're not certain of. Worry is the suitcase of fear, and it has no destination. It goes absolutely nowhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. Worry is not about a being a problem solver, but worry is definitely a problem maker. It doesn't solve anything for you, but it can so enough make some problems for you. Amen. And we're going to talk about a little bit later exactly what that does. And here's another thing. Worry creates and causes damage to your life. It can create damage in several areas. But here's a few more, uh, important ones that we need to learn and write this down. Number one, worry creates damage to your physical body. I've already stated that, but it creates damage to your physical body through stress and tension. That stress and tension will actually bring on high blood pressure. That's been proven. That stress and tension will actually cause heart attacks. That stress and tension will actually cause heart palpitations. I'm a witness to that. You get under severe, in, 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 in severe strain and worry about things that you can't resolve, that you don't have answers to, and you internalize that thing, and before you know it, you're having heart palpitations, your heart beating out of your chest. Simply because of the fact that you've invited something that there's an answer to, you just don't have it. Number two, worries opens, uh, worry opens the door to chaos where the, the creativity of God cannot come forth. Listen, saints of God, God is a God of order, not chaos. God is a God of order, not create chaos. And worry has a way of creating chaos in your life because you get caught up in the loop. You get caught up just spinning your tires looking for an answer. When you don't have one, you get caught up looking for an answer when you don't have one. Number three, write this down. Worry dilutes or eliminates the power of faith and hope. Worry dilutes or eliminates the power of faith and hope. Worry causes you not to trust God because it creates an inward reliance. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, here's what I mean by it. Now, let's go to, to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And we're going to look at this in the Amplified today. And I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Solomon said, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. In other words, God is telling us that, listen, you're going to be confronted with things in life, but one of the things that you most have to mainly do and really truly understand that you got to lean and trust on me. 
Life doesn't always have the answers, but God certainly does. Amen? So when we learn how to lean on, trust in, and rely on it, and get out of our own way, God has a way of bringing answers to us. May not come out exactly on the time of when we need it, but if you just stay there and stick with it. God has a way of bringing an answer to you because you're leaning not, lean not, lean not to your own understanding. See, even as we look at this situation with this, this coronavirus that we're dealing with right now, and oftentimes, again, we're looking for answers of it. That's where the uncertainty has come in because we don't have all the answers to it. But we certainly can have a response to it. Those things we can do. Amen? So we, even if it's not this particular issue, there are things that you can do oftentimes that, will, again, will help you gain some certainty in your life. And what God is trying to get us to understand is that he's our certainty. We can lean in, trust in, rely upon him because he is absolute and certain. Amen? Well, listen, number four is worry slows your progress in life because it creates inaction or the wrong action. We have to remember that fear is what causes us to get stuck. And when we are worried about something in our life, it causes us to not be movable, to stay in that place where inaction is taking place. Or we stay in a place where we're having wrong action and making wrong decisions because of a worry response. Amen? So how do we defeat worry? Let's talk about that for a moment because ultimately that's the whole purpose of us having the conversation today and teach this, teaching this word. Number one, and let's go back to Matthew uh, chapter 6, 25 through 27 in the NIV. Let's start at verse 25. How do we defeat worry? Let's look at what Jesus is saying. And I want you to pay close attention to this. Because here's what Jesus is trying to get mankind to understand. Is that you have to lean on totally and trust everything that he's saying. Believe in him. Trust in him. He said, give your life to me. Don't you take it. Give it to me. Let me guide it. Let me lead it. Let me show you what it is that you need to do. But in addition to that, he's going to try to show you if, in this passage of Scripture how valuable you are and why you need to do that. Amen? So first he starts off by saying, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. Well, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. You, you don't understand everything that I'm dealing with. He said, don't worry about your life. But Pastor, I don't have an answer for this yet. I don't have an answer for the fact that my children are acting up. My spouse is acting up. He says, don't worry about your life. Be concerned about your life, but don't worry about your life. Because worry does nothing for you. Then he goes on to say, don't worry about your life. What you'll eat. What you'll drink. About your body. What you'll wear. He says, is not life more important than food? And the body more important than clothes? See, oftentimes we're worried about things. In other words, Jesus is saying, even though these things may be major things to you, they're really minor things. Because here, here's the point. If you don't have any food, if we ask enough, somebody will help us. If you don't have any money, there are ways in order for us to get money legally <laughs> where somebody will help us. Amen? There are ways for us to do it the right way where somebody will help us. And I've learned this the hard way of, through life is that, listen, if you ask enough, somebody will provide it for you. We have not. Why? Because we ask not. And God is saying, I will put it upon somebody's heart to touch your life and make sure that you got the food, that you got the, 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 the clothes to wear. You'll, you will be taken care of. May not be at the level of which you want, but somebody's going to be willing to help you. Amen. Let's go to verse 26. He says, look at the birds in the air. Do they not sow? They do, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and your heavenly Father feeds them. In other words, he's saying, this is the least of these, but you're a lot more valuable. You're a lot more valuable to him because he's birthed his spirit inside of you, and you are a lot more valuable to him. But he says, look at the birds of the air. They don't do anything the way you do it. They're not creative. 
They're not innovative. They don't build things. They build nests for themselves. But they don't do anything. They play their part in nature. But they don't do anything compared to what mankind does for this earth that you have authority over. So don't think for one minute that God values them more than he values you. He says that you're valuable to me. He says you're the apple of my eye. If you were the only person on earth, you would be the person that my attention would be totally focused on. And even with the multitude of the millions that are here, your, my attention, God is saying this to you, that my attention is focused on you. So every need that you have will be supplied. Every desire that you have will be answered. Every want that you have will be answered if it's according to his will. Amen? You don't have to worry about anything because worry is a boundless, purposeless thing. It does absolutely nothing for you. In fact, he says, are you not more valuable than they? In verse 27, let's go there real quick. He said, who by you, who of you by worry can add one single hour to his life? And we already know the answer to that. You can't. You can't do anything. You can't add any time to your life by worry. In fact, worry has no purpose other than to destroy you. So number one is, let's lean in, believe in, and totally trust God. Your faith brings assurance. Worry does not. And here's one thing. Here's the things that we learn again from this scripture. In fact, let me just go to number two. Here's the number two. Write this down. Understand that worry is a choice, not a mandate. Let me say that again. Worry is a choice. Not a mandate. You can choose not to worry just like you can choose to worry. Worry, again, is meditated and focused fear brought about through uncertainty. You may be certain of an outcome. You may not be certain of an outcome, but you can be certain of your response and the response that brings about the outcome. This is why the just shall live by faith. Saints of God, there is practically nothing in this world that you can absolutely be absolutely 100% assured of other than your faith in God. Amen? Other than your faith of God. In fact, let's look, at, let's look at this. We need to understand that in order for us to eliminate worry, you don't eliminate worry by thinking something else. You eliminate worry by speaking to the thoughts that you have that are out of control that's causing the worry. Amen? Let's look, at, uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. I hope that you all follow me this evening, that you are getting something from this, because this is, this is the Holy Spirit trying to teach you. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. He says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought, to make it obedient to Christ. We acknowledge, we demolish arguments in every pretension or every thought that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take it captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. In other words, God is trying to get us to understand that, that when you have worry that is taking root in your life or is attempting to take root in your life, you don't eliminate it just simply by thinking another thought. You eliminate it by speaking to it. In fact, what you should speak to it is the truth of God's word. Because when you speak the truth of God's word into the situation, it changes the situation. In fact, let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. We're almost done. We're getting ready to wrap up in a few. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Jesus said, he answered, he said, man does not live on bread alone but by every word that cometh from the mouth of God. This is where our reliance needs to be, saints of God. This is where our trust needs to be. Not based upon our own thoughts and the thoughts that, that, that have created the word, but our reliance and trust needs to be in God's word because that's how we live. Man shall not live. Man shall not live. Jesus said, Don't, give your life to me. <laughs> he said, give your life to me. I'll make sure that I guard it, that I steward over it. That I'll take care of it for you because I've given my life to you. But give your life to me and allow me to be the one that provides the answers for you. Because doing it your own way, leaning to your own understanding, has oftentimes created the fear 
And that fear does not provide you with any strength. It's a destroyer. It's a problem creator, not a problem resolver. Amen? And the last thing that we need to do in order to defeat worry is focus on what you can, can control and leave everything else to God. Focus on what you can control and leave everything else to God. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Focus on what you can control and leave everything else to God. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Well, how do I do that, Pastor? Well, here's how you do it. Go back to Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, every care, every anxiety that you have, and we'll see this in the next scripture I'm going to give you, you give that to God. You cast it on him. You start speaking God's word over your life that builds your faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You start speaking God's word over your life, over the problem, over, the, over your family's life, over the situation that you're dealing with. And watch what God does in your life. Start providing you with answers. So ultimately, we have to make sure that we cast those cares. We have to give them over to him. You give them over to him by speaking God's word in your life. You give them over to him by not coming into agreement with the thing that wants to cause the fear. You give it over to him and cast that care on him by not just simply, by, by not trying to think the thoughts, but when the thoughts pop up, speak God's word into the situation. Amen? Let's go to Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. This is our last scripture, and we'll be done. Here Paul is saying, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Verse 7. And the peace of God. Say peace of God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Saints of God, this is the reason why you don't worry. Because again, when we cast the care, when we go to God in prayer and say, God, I can't handle this. I don't have an answer for this. I know that worry is not the solution to it. And we cast that care upon him. Guess what? He cares for us. He'll start opening the door by the way of the Holy Spirit to provide us with answers. He'll start putting people in your pathway that you can ask questions of that will help you get the answer. He'll open the door and he'll actually remove the fear from you in order for you to know and for you to understand that, hey, there's an answer for me. I can talk to this person. I can do this and I can do that. You can control your response. You may not be able to control everything else around you, but you can control your response. And that's what you want to control through a trusting relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let me give you those three points again of how you defeat fear. Number one, lean in, believe in, and totally trust God. Your faith brings the assurances. Worry does not. Number two, understand that worry is a choice. It's not a mandate. You can choose not to worry. Amen? And number three, focus on what you can control and leave everything else to God. Focus on what you can control. You can control your response and leave everything else to God. Because if you're trying to control more than that, that's where the problem comes in. You get overwhelmed. Before you know it, you don't have an answer to the thing. It's not, you're not certain in it. And fear has crept in. And fear takes control over your mind and your life. And therefore, you end up spinning your wheels. Spinning your wheels. I pray, saints of God, that this has blessed you this evening. That this has given you a way to, to, to be able to get some control over some things that you're perhaps worried about. And ultimately eliminate the word from your life because it's unproductive. It won't do anything for you. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful and thankful to you for this time. Again, this opportunity, this moment in this season that you've given us to minister your word. I pray that your people have received it, received it in their hearts, in the good souls of their heart. 
And I pray for a hundredfold return for everyone that has listened to your word and received it. And Father, we'll make sure that we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. I don't want to take this time for granted. I want to make sure that during this time, for anybody out there that's listening to this, that if you don't know Jesus, we want to make sure that we present you with an opportunity in order for you to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is not something that you earn yourself into. This is not something that you work yourself into. This is God's free gift to mankind for you to receive Jesus as Lord. God is not so much interested in your behavior, what you've done, what you haven't done, as he is and has an interest in your relationship with him. And he's open to that. Because if you believe in him as Lord and Savior, he'll clean up the behavior. You don't have to act right to get right. All you have to do is receive and believe that Jesus is Lord. So if that's you and you've been contemplating and you feel like this is the time in your life where you're tired of worrying, you're tired of going through the problems and you wanted some certainty in your life that only comes from your relationship with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that where you are right now, where you are today, you can repeat after me of what I'm about to say and you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if you will, let's take a moment and let's just pray. Repeat after me. Say, Father, come into my life. Cleanse me of all sin and unrighteousness. I believe that you are Lord. I believe that you did exactly what you said, that you would die and rise up on the third day. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Come into my life. Lead me. Guide me. Control my life, Lord. And I'll make sure that I follow you. Now, if you said that simple prayer with belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and you allow him to be Lord and Savior over your life, then you're saved. There may not be any fireworks going off. There may not be anybody around you jumping and shouting. You should. But at the end of the day, you're saved. Now the next step is for you to, number one, get into a Bible-based church where you can be trained and nurtured as a disciple of Christ and you can grow in the life that Jesus... www.nloc-outreach and actually view this video or we'll have it up a little bit later on Facebook and you'll be able to see it on our Facebook page of the ministry. We're so grateful and thankful to you that you've had an opportunity to come and be with us this evening. And we look forward to seeing you and talking to you.